Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this uh, February 10th, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can listen to my show every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's on FirstAmendmentRadio.com, or you can listen to the show at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, or go to my website at ARC. T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N.com. And I spell that for you because many people spell Arctic, A-R-T-I-C. It's A-R-C, Arctic Beacon. Dot com, just to make it clear. Okay, my guest today is Bert Kranz from the Alamo Ministry, and Bert uh, is, is a regular on my show, and I bring Bert on so I can keep this story about what's happened to this Christian ministry in the public eye. Uh, basically what happened was, and let me just give you a brief outline for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, but this was a Christian ministry who uh, basically uh, pinpointed the Vatican as the Antichrist in the in the book of Revelations, which is nothing new, folks. I mean, this is nothing, this is not hate speech, this is not interpreting the Bible in this kind of weird way. Uh, in fact, the reformers of the Protestant Reformation, way back when this, uh, when the you-know-what hit the fan against the Vatican, this is their interpretation of Revelation, uh, of the book of Revelations, and who the Antichrist is. Uh, this has caused a big stir, uh, not only for the Alamo ministry, which uh, went one step farther and began to say, well, let's teach people about the truth, about what our reformers used to talk about. And when they started sending literature out, this is 40 years ago, all over the world, millions and millions of pieces, not only talking biblically, but talking about Vatican's control over governments, their, their political intrigue, uh, they have been targeted by... Um, the good old American government and FBI and CIA, who all work together, as we've showed you the connections on uh, other shows, and the, making this ministry's life a living hell, so to speak. Now, what happened in 2008, uh, the final nail went in, well, the government thought the final nail went into the coffin and put Tony Alamo, the, the pastor who I've talked to many times, in jail for 175 years. Now... I am telling you what, I've done shows on people, for example, the government allowed uh, a guy by the name of Sammy Gravano, who com who admitted to 19 murders, he was put in the witness protection program. So apparently our government likes mass killers, you know, and lets them walk the streets, but they do not like anybody who talks against the Vatican. Now that is kind of weird, don't you think? There must be a reason, and I think it's all money. That's one big reason, and control, power, and basically to lead you down the wrong path into this one world government, one world order. So I bring Bert Krantz, who's a member of this ministry, on to show you that you have no freedom of speech anymore in this country, and you have no freedom of religion. And so let's talk first about the ecumenical movement. Now, let me explain to you what that is. It's an effort aimed at the unity of Christians throughout the world. Most often, it specifically means the visible unity of Christian churches in some form or another. Now, this, uh, this is a unification that started with the Vatican wanting to bring all Christianity, they call themselves Christian when they're pagan, under one tent. Now, the word comes from the Greek, ecumenism, ecumenical, comes from the Greek, which means the whole inhabited world, one world religion. They're bringing everybody together under a doctrine. So, uh, Bert, why don't we uh, talk about this from your standpoint? And I wanted to ask you a question, and that was, uh, let me just get this straight on my computer. Okay, I wanted to ask you a question. Now, in my research about the ecumenical movement, I started looking years ago for other Christian denominations like the Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah, some Jehovah Witnesses, uh, some bigger groups that talked against the Vatican. But since then I found that even at the higher level these organizations have been infiltrated. What's your take on that? Have they ever tried to come and help you? Seventh-day Adventists try to help us? Yeah. No, I, I can't think of any instance where any denomination has tried to come to our aid. I've gone to pastors uh, to try to get them to write uh, back in the 90s when Pastor Lama was uh, in prison, falsely charged for the tax problems, and uh, I went to pastors to try.
try and get uh, them to help Pastor Lama with his uh, parole. And, and every without a fail, every one of them, uh, they just didn't want to come close to Pastor Alamo. And the same thing, and it's interesting because uh, when the Branch Davidians, which was a branch of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and also the uh, when this uh, split up from the Mormon group in Texas, when they were being persecuted and their children were being taken, and of course in the, with the Branch Davidians, they were being killed, Pastor Alamo spoke out loud and clear on those subjects that the government had no business getting into those churches without even, you know, uh, necessarily agreeing with their doctrines. I know that, you know, Koresh, they did have weapons there, and uh, Pastor Lama would never would condone having weapons in his church, but he spoke out for their rights and, and, and with the, the iniquity and wickedness of the government coming in and plowing over churches like with tanks, like that. that's just not what's supposed to happen in America. But no, we've never been helped by other denominations, including the Seventh-day Adventists. And uh, by the way, thanks for having me on today, Greg. Uh, <laughs> no, no problem. We had a little bit of and internet problems, yeah. so we solved that, hopefully. But go ahead. Yeah, t- talk a little bit about this ecumenical movement, because, you know, we hear a lot about all these churches now unifying. But are they unifying under a false doctrine? What's your thoughts? Well, it's interesting that you brought up that you found that the Seventh-day Adventists are being infiltrated at high levels because the Vatican infiltrates all denominations at high levels, and they have been for many years. And uh, by the time they even came up with the Vatican Council uh, in the early 60s, and they were trying to move the different denominations into uh, an umbrella under the Vatican, they had already paved the way for years and years and years with the highest levels of different denominational uh, Christian leaders, or so so to speak, leaders, to where the denominations just began to fall in line with the Vatican, and to where today uh, the Vatican is portrayed as a Christian organization, which it couldn't be farther from the truth. And so all these denominations to gather together under what you even said is a pagan, uh, and beyond pagan. It's just the devil himself has his seat right in Rome. That's what the Bible says. And he gives power to this false prophet, beast, uh, one world government, uh, conglomerate. uh, And the Vatican is right in the middle, right in the center of it. So, you know, this ecumenical movement is feeding right into that and drawing the masses into a one world government, one world church controlled by people that are totally possessed with the devil. And, yeah. And uh, that's, go ahead. No, and, you know, the one thing I wanted to mention was uh, when I, I, I talked to a lot of Seventh-day Adventists at one time, I was trying to go around and uh, introduce myself because, uh, you know, I'm talking one-on-one in prayer groups with these people, and I found that they were very interested in 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 the Book of Revelations and pinpointing the Vatican as the Antichrist, but their public stance on the Vatican ended there. They didn't want to get into the political areas. They didn't want to rock the boat when it came to the, you know. I would talk about oh sure they didn't enjoy the pedophilia thing, but they didn't want to get into basically the idea that the Vatican may have been involved or probable cause shows in the Lincoln assassination, things like that. They don't want to get into the Vatican's intrigue and the Vatican Bank. I would talk about the money laundering, uh, Operation Gladio, things like this. They stayed kind of clear of that and stuck to a Bible interpretation. I thought that was, and I would tell them at their prayer meetings, I said, you can't have one without the other. You got to talk about the political aspect of the Vatican as well, the secular as well as the spiritual, which Tony agreed with me totally when I first encountered him, and was more than willing to put his neck on the line and say things that you don't hear in America. And I think that's what's the difference. What do you think? Well, of course, the government involvement in it all is part of the biblical interpretation, and so to leave that out. You're leaving out much scripture and what the scripture says, how that there will be a one world government. And how can you have a one world government without political leaders and politicians all getting together and with their armies and with all their enforcement agencies 
Well, how, how did uh, Hitler come to power? He was backed by the Vatican. And uh, they always hate uh, anyone trying to expose this or even uh, really telling the truth and bring, bringing people out of it. Now, the, uh, they know that they have a mouth, the, the media, the mass media, and, they, and that by and large people, they consider them to be very stupid like cattle. And mm-hmm. so they bombard them with all this uh, propaganda, and and it goes beyond the television and movies down into the education. If you ever look at uh, the the textbooks that are given to children on science and different things, everything is so uh, propagandized to where people are uh, just trained up to believe what everything the one world government and the news media and the entertainment media and the print media is all telling them the media at large i'm saying and the seventh day adventists have not been very vocal uh in a in a loud sense on a world stage as far as coming against the vatican they they do believe that the vatican's antichrist but they don't come out like pastor alamo in in speaking out against you know the corruption and the the truth of, of what's powering them. And they know. They do know. Oh, yes. And let me give you two examples to, to lay credence to what you're saying. Uh, one is my own personal uh, experience with a group of Seventh-day Adventists in a small town in Colorado. And when we would sit there talking about the book of Revelations, I said to them, why don't we put together all of these book pamphlets and start sending out the truth about the Vatican's role in uh, the Vatican Bank scandal, about all these things they're involved with in the politics, about all the Jesuit infiltration. Oh, we can't do that. They didn't want to do that. They didn't want to take that step. So I saw something was up. And I remember even pointing out your ministry. And they were kind of cool at that point. Oh, no, we don't get involved in things like that. Uh, we'd have to go. Well, what they said was we would have to get it approved by the hierarchy of our church. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, now, a second example. When I met Bill Hughes, who was a Seventh-day Adventist pastor from Florida, I think it's Eustis, Florida, and he was a uh, working as a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, but when he started raising the same questions and printed a small book called The Secret Terrorists and The Enemy Within, which really talked the same way Tony and you guys talk, the same thing. Bill was ostracized by that Seventh-day Adventist church. And, you know, he didn't want to go and get authority, which he knew the hierarchy wouldn't give him to print these books, so he divorced himself from the Seventh-day Adventist, began, kept his ministry up, and pointed out one interesting thing. He said back in 1982, he said the Seventh-day Adventist logo was always three angels with trumpets, right? The three angels with the trumpets. And he said in 1982, they changed it to three wavy lines. And he said the symbols are very important to the New World Order. But Bill said to me, uh, and now he's doing a lot more. He's talking about things like Operation Gladio. He's talking about, man, yeah, go and read those books, people, if I uh, might show. If you haven't heard The Secret Terrorists and Enemy Within, you can. he sent millions of copies all over the world. And you got to read it. But he now talks about the apostasy of the Seventh-day Adventists, but he doesn't say, he says, listen, I was a Seventh-day Adventist, and I guess I still am in theory, but I don't report to the hierarchy. I'm my own ministry. You know what I'm getting at? My own ministry. But he couldn't exist in that ministry because of his stance, just like Tony. So doesn't that tell you they're infiltrated as well? It tells you they're infiltrated, and, and at maybe lower levels, they're afraid of persecution now, at high levels some of them might be afraid of the persecution also which is a lever that the infiltrators use to keep them down mm-hmm. and and uh it's it's interesting you're talking about the uh ecumenical movement and i was mentioning all the different forms of media that are used to brainwash people but one way that they really brainwash the christians also is with false versions of the bible and false interpretations of the bible that are uh, blazed abroad through the theological seminaries and goes out into the pulpits. And one of the big things that they uh, really press is is that the authority is the government. That that uh, you know everyone has to. 
do whatever the government says because they're ordained of God. You know, you've heard that scripture. Yes, yeah, right. That the powers that be are ordained of God, but it goes right on in that scripture to say that the ones ordained of God are the ministers. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think that God ordains that uh, that people should abort their children? or that people, men should marry men, or women should marry women, or, you know, so many other things, like uh, lesbianism, homosexuality. These are things that God condemns, fornication, adultery. uh, You know, he doesn't uh, ordain people like this. And you see it on the stage uh, at at the uh, presidential debates. They're not uh, talking about getting rid of these pernicious problems that are plaguing mankind and bringing plagues upon upon mankind yet they're they're just talking like you know just issues that people can still you know they can sue their conscience and they don't they think they're doing some kind of righteous thing by saving the world by uh not using their automobile so much or you know <laughs> saving the world by all these crazy ways but instead of really going to the heart of the matter that it's sin and that's what see tony alamo has always preached against sin and that's what jesus preached was against sin and sin is what really drags man down it it, it, it's it's what is going to send a person to hell and so tony preaches this the gospel that jesus died for our sins that there's a way out that we can accept the blood that Jesus shed, and it's a very personal relationship with God. You're not going to join any institution, any group, any organization that's going to get you into heaven. You have to personally meet Jesus Christ, get on your knees and accept him. See, and then when a person does that, and they follow the Lord Jesus Christ, well, Jesus said, if you follow me, they'll hate you because they hated me. They will... uh, come against you if they come against me they won't believe you because they didn't believe me whatever they do to you it's because that's the way they do to me and you see in the bible you can read what they did to him and that's what they'll do to you and they do it now in an organized and a very uh, uh orchestrated fashion with this one world government new world order vatican led you know beast government and the vatican's right in the middle of it Right, and I wanted to mention also, you know, you talked uh, about the different versions of the Bibles, and uh, even some of them are pat- are uh, copyrighted uh, by Rupert Murdoch, and we know who he is. Uh, yeah. But yes, they there there are have been some really good uh, research done by uh, certain people talking about the changes from the King James to the other versions, and there's thousands of them. And it's in and it boils down to this. I've done many shows in the past on it because I was interested. Because I said, if they can change certain things in the Bible, they can also change the direction of what Christianity is. And you find that they're they they're diminishing the importance of Jesus, even in certain little subtle words they use. They change a lot of things, and people have to watch out for that. And and bar none, outside of a few Christian groups and people that have found the Lord through themselves, they do not use the King James version. You know. Oh, for sure. You know, and I did want to point out also through research about the ecumenical movement that this idea, you know, you you can find so many different, you know, just Google Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? And you've got so many things from, well, let's boil it down to this. It's either outside of talking about the real Antichrist, who is the organization of the Vatican, and that's specific. And you can go through this. You can go through the book of Revelations and other parts of the Bible, which really define it as that and it has more credibility than the other versions and let's just talk spiritually they're they're either divided into two categories the antichrist has already come okay being a man or this antichrist being a man is coming in the future it's not about the vatican of course now Here's the deal. There were two Jesuit priests. This was back around the time, in the, right after the Protestant Reformation. And one of them was Alcazar, the other I can't remember. And it is very interesting that their role, their assignment, was to disprove 
that what the Protestants were saying about the Antichrist being us, being the Vatican. Their job was to, to, to quelch that, and what they did is they wrote huge theses, one taking the, the view that the Antichrist came in the past, during the Roman Empire, during the 100 or 200 BC or AD, and then the, the other one had the assignment of showing that it's coming in the future. Now, I'm asking you, and you've read, you've read the Bible thoroughly on this subject. In your estimation, isn't there more credence to the fact that the Vatican organization is the Antichrist by the biblical words that are given through God? then the Antichrist has already come or is coming in the future? Of course there is, Greg, you know that. And uh, well, I wanted my uh, listeners uh, to hear it, you know. Go ahead. Uh, not only that, but the very, uh, the very fact that they've come up with these different versions and different stories is in the Bible because the Bible said that uh, Satan would deceive the whole world. The whole world. And Jesus said, okay, strive to enter in at the straight, narrow gate, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and few will be that will go in therein. But broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to eternal destruction. And many, see, so the many, the majority, is always wrong. They're always wrong. Remember that. Mm -hmm. The majority is always wrong. It's a historical fact. And uh, that's what the majority condemned the Lord Jesus Christ then, and they condemn Christians today. Christians are very much in the minority, and I'm not talking about people that call themselves Christians, why Catholics call themselves Christians, and I'm not saying that there's no Catholics that are Christians, but God says, come out of her. That organization is not a Christian organization. And anyone that's a Christian and gets saved, and they're in the Catholic Church, the Bible says, come out of her, that you don't be partaker of her sins and of the plagues that God's going to send down upon her. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. And you know what? We only got about two minutes before our first break. But let me just uh, say this. I'm, I'm going to give you some time to think about this uh, during the break to help clear this up for people out there and me, myself, and uh what, what I see on the Internet a lot now, and even the TV shows. Now, there's a TV show Fox has put out called Lucifer. Then I see this whole group of people who call calling themselves Luciferians, which are basically stating, many of them stating that Lucifer is not Satan, okay? He is the man of light. He is the one, the guiding light, and all this kind of stuff. So they're separating Lucifer from Satan. And I don't think that's the way it is. And they're drawing a lot of people into this Luciferian goodness doctrine. And I find it to be really dangerous when people don't understand the, you know, Lucifer, Satan, what, is, what does it mean? Who are the, what are these terms and how are they used? And I thought, before you give me an answer to this, I only got 20 sec, 30 seconds here. You think about that over the break and help people understand that even this TV show, Lucifer, these people that are claiming Luciferianism is good, they're really totally off base and being misled. And I want you to help people to think about that because I find that I get into arguments with people on this. And, you know, I, I whatever I say biblically just goes in one ear out the other. So I thought we could emphasize the diff, you know, what what's wrong with this doctrine and why they're being led like you said, right to hell anyway. So we'll be back in three minutes with Bert Krantz uh, on the investigative journals. Right now, we're going to take a three-minute break. See you on the other side. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crossthebordered.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy. In order 
to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Cancelled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C R O S S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book. The rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. The book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, we're back after our break with Bert Krantz of the Alamo Ministry, and I pose that question to Bert. Uh, help us understand this 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 uh, Lucifer, Satan, this whole Luciferian uh, idea that's being purported. I see a lot on the internet. Guy contacts me and says, "You know, Greg, you got it all wrong. Luciferianism is a good thing." Bert, explain it to us. Well, one thing that's interesting is how that you you even played how they they worship Lucifer in the Vatican, mm -hmm. uh, in publicly. Mm -hmm. So the the Vatican obviously believes that also. And I did take advantage of the time uh, during the break to look up the one scripture in the King James Bible where Lucifer is mentioned, and that's in Isaiah. That's in chapter 14, verse. Uh, it's verse 12 where he's actually mentioned. But I'd like to read, and I'm going to start from verse 9. It says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which hast weakened the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, 
that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory under one, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. It goes on and on, but that doesn't sound like a good guy. No, that's, no. That's not the epitaph of a, of a good man. No, that is speaking of Lucifer who started a rebellion in the kingdom of heaven and was cast out. And this is in the book of Revelation. I, I didn't get time to go there and to look up the scriptures, and uh, we don't want this to be a Bible reading, but uh, in Revelation, it talks the same story and then puts Satan on there. Satan, that old devil, the serpent, and Satan. Right, and, and so... Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, well, to say that they're different entities is really such a stretch. It's, it's beyond belief that anyone could even think that. And people are making up their own doctrines. You've got people writing satanic Bibles and writing up uh, things that they say were channeled to them from who knows where. You know, and, and what it is is these demons, one-third of the host of heaven of the angels were cast out of heaven with Satan, with Lucifer, who became Satan. Okay, so these foul spirits, they... Uh, just like the Lord inhabits the saints, these foul spirits inhabit those that are not saved. That's why I've talked about it on your show before and Pastor Alamo. People can look up this in very depth on our website, alamoministries.com. Pastor Alamo has written much on this subject. Uh, that, you know, when people say that they, you know, deja vu or different things where they uh, communicate with other spirits, that's these devils getting into people. And, uh, and also, when they take on these spirits, they become a body. That's what this Antichrist government is, is stems from, is all these demons inhabiting these people getting together. Under, it's very much like the Tower of Babel, where they all wanted to get together and overthrow God. Well, that's what they want to do now. And they, on the earth, they virtually have overthrown God. God isn't allowed anywhere on this earth, in any forum. You can keep them in your little building down there, but don't try and broadcast it to the world what God really says. It's okay if you got a false god. That's fine. Just like this ecumenical movement you mentioned, and that's all unity, and we keep it all together. As long as you don't preach the real, true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, lest you end up in hell. He says, fear God and keep his commandments, because after you're dead... He's the one that's going to decide where you're going to spend eternity. So to think that Lucifer is good, well, no, Lucifer is the rebellious angel. He, that he was the covering cherub in, in heaven, led the angels in praise to God, and he formed a rebellion in heaven and was cast out with one-third of the angels, and he's going about, the Bible says, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour on this earth right now. And, and his biggest trick, one of his biggest tricks, is to convince people that he does not exist. And if, if you don't believe he exists, then he's got you. He's got you right where he wants you. Yeah, and that's, you know, we played that segment in Latin where the uh, the, the huge ceremony in the Vatican, really, they came out and said they worshipped Lucifer. I don't think you can worship Lucifer and God as the, at the same time. My point was I wanted to explain, and you did a really great job stating, because people tell me, oh, Lucifer, Luciferianism is good, Satanism is bad. We're not Satanists. I say you're one and the same. Exactly, that's right? right? That's exactly right. Right. Exactly right. And that's what I always felt and always taught and, and, and was taught and, and read the Bible in that way and learned that from people who were very truthful about it. And then I see this huge movement now where these radio hosts are getting on and they're explaining all these things, how Christians are really off base because they really don't know who Lucifer really is. And in fact, they're basically stating that God is bad and Lucifer is good. That is their whole theme, isn't it? Well, those, yes, those ideas fit right into the ecumenical movement because we can all get along with the Vatican, everybody except for people like Tony Alamo, 
who exposes the wickedness of this. You see, and, and, it, and with the hip, hypocrisy of that is like miles deep when you think that they, uh, their big scriptures are like, oh, don't judge anyone. Oh, accept everyone. Oh, be tolerant. Oh, yeah, except for this weeds all over here. No, no, he's got to go off with his mm-hmm. head. You mm-hmm. see that hypocrisy there? I mean, it's just incredible. And then they make it as if Tony Alamo's persecuting the Vatican. You know, <laughs> like this little uh, preacher <laughs> in, in Arkansas is, uh, and he is he is literally, uh, you know, coming against this world beast government, even from a prison cell. But to think that he's physically, like, persecuting, like, make, he doesn't make laws where people can be imprisoned. He doesn't make laws where people, you know, can be put to death. Yeah, and but I'm... the Vatican does. Yeah, and you know what was interesting? I missed talking to him because when I used to interview him, it was refreshing because I think what also they got angry was that Tony, that Tony was very, very... Uh, uh, charismatic in a sense where he and he wasn't that uh, that fluffy showy type uh, phony charisma it was a real interesting way he communicates the Bible and it really makes people listen to it and I think they didn't like that <laughs> they don't want you know uh, for example he wasn't this monotone preacher that would turn people off he had a flair about him that made the Bible uh, kind of vibrate a little bit and, and, and got into people's hearts and souls. And I think they didn't like that very much. What's your thoughts about his methods, you know, well, his the man? Messages, his message is rightly dividing the word of God. Rightly dividing is the big is a big key there because even people that preach out of the King James Bible and many other Bibles, you know how in the theological seminaries, they're really emphasizing how, oh, that translation was bad, and that word in the Hebrew and that word in the Greek really meant this or that. Well, you know, when Wycliffe translated the Bible into English, his goal and and what he stated to the theological um, scholars of his day was that I'm going to make it to where the common plowboy understands Holy Scripture better than you guys, because you guys, uh, they would just preach the faith right out of people's hearts and that's what happens today they they slice and dice the bible and the gospel up to where the faith is preached away the power of god is gone and people will just go along oh we have to be part of this group this group this group the vatican we have to just go along with that and that's how we'll be saved and most many of them don't even believe there is an afterlife or or anything to do with scripture because it's been cut out of what's preached on on the pulpits but tony like you mentioned when he's preaching there's no part of the bible that he'll leave out and every part of it he'll bring it to life because he'll rightly divide it and the bible explains itself tony doesn't put his personal spin on it or give his own opinion of it he says what it is and then he uh he'll back that up from the other parts of scripture how it all comes together and it's it's the word of God and the John uh, chapter one says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the same was at the beginning with God and all things that are created were created by him so this is powerful that's very powerful and, and that word is very powerful and Tony is just filled with that word and when it comes out that's the, the charisma you're talking about I don't like that word because the Catholics use it so much. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, that's the, the word maybe draws people to what he's saying. Yeah, and I'm just looking at it, looking back when I used to talk to him and didn't know him very well. Uh, how I found that his interviews were refreshing because he didn't pull any punches. Even when I spoke about the Vatican's intrigue in Rome and things like that, he wasn't afraid to get you know to uh, to actually talk about those things. Where in America, that's so very rare. That even the you know, and that's what I say. These ministers on the pulpit. I remember one time, and this will lead into uh, these presidential elections that are coming up in the primaries. And I specifically wanted to. Every four years, I I do take time to watch the candidates because they tell me a lot about what direction these insiders are really working towards, and what they're bringing out, and never getting to the truth. But by by masking it, if you understand the truth, you can figure some things out. So that's why every four years I take time to comment about this. Uh, and the thing I find is that 
war is is on the minds of most people now on the minds of all of everybody on these debates no matter if they're democratic left or republican right are concerned about isis and what we're going to do to stop them and this war on terror but none of them ever talk about where it comes from and that we're basically through our covert operations created isis and that they want this war to continue that's exactly what's going on and i keep and by listening to this, you know, their stance on immigration, which is basically they want the borders open, but they say well, they're going to close them. You see the hypocrisy. And if someone begins to speak the truth, no, never would they get even be allowed to ask a question like this. And my feeling is they'd be hauled out of the room and taken away by guards and uh, thrown into the street saying you're a hate speech or you're a terrorist you can't talk like that when in fact these people are spawning the terrorism your thoughts well, gosh where do i start yeah. <laughs> this, this, it seems that uh well just go into the obama administration that was brought in um, from the last uh show that they put up of an election you know, you got a very questionable whether he's, he's even an illegal alien or uh, himself. Is still, I don't think there still has been an accurate rendition of his birth certificate brought forward that wasn't photoshopped, and uh, he is just so linked in with the Jesuits that uh, you can see that Jesuit goals have been brought out or have been accomplished all throughout his administration. The uh, like bringing in tons, uh, all these. Uh, illegal immigrants from the south of the border that are what 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 religion are they the, the by and large they're mostly all catholics and mm -hmm. so you're bringing in the catholic vote so that more catholics get brought into office if you remember what archbishop that one from australia said you know we have to get more um catholics into all the high positions of government and then uh obama has just done everything he can to repeal the second amendment which is like one of the underpinnings of the entire uh, uh, constitutional rights of America. And of course, the, uh, you know, the uh, redistribution of money, the uh, breaking of the Bank of America. I mean, it's just one thing after another. And all these things are goals of the one world government. You can't have a one world government if everyone doesn't work together and, and conglomerate their power. And we have to centralize the money and centralize you know all the authority and all the power and the people just listen to their uh, media and and the media the way they cover like you're saying if you you got a true question in at the, the presidential debates they throw you right out of the hall but uh the people just go right along and they got these left and the right or they take uh, can do you want door number one number two or number three you know mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're just the same thing behind each door yeah and my so, point my point in the last couple of shows which uh i wanted to just emphasize is that what they've really done is they've turned everything uh made it back everything is not the way you know the fictional world is uh, what they actually are living in the one they're creating and people are buying into it thinking it's reality and the real world as we're talking today is thought to be fictional and conspiracy theorists and hate speech and all this kind of stuff so you know this comes from again i believe your point is well taken uh, the deception of satan turning everything making every black into white white into black everything is opposite and if you look at all the things that they do that's exactly the luciferian movement we turn lucifer into good and god and jesus bad god bad and they turn everything backwards. Your thoughts? It's done systematically through the media, through the education, through the legal system. You look at the way they, the way that they uh, convicted Pastor Tony Alamo. They brought in uh, a bunch. Now, any church that brings in people off the streets, this church for almost 50 years now has brought people in off the streets and uh, given them a place to stay and taught them the word of god and some people have been filtrated some people have you know that have wicked hearts they this is not the place for them and they they uh, become bitter and hateful and they 
and but the devil knows that, and that's he uses people like that and dishonest, uh, just uh, evil-hearted people to bring accusations against his people. And now the government, being led by the Vatican, by the devil, uh, has got that down to a science. These people that testified against Tony Alamo, they didn't go to the government and say, hey, I've got this complaint against Pastor Alamo. No, the government sought them out, and they found people, they bribed them, they intimidated them, they offered them uh, prizes and big money, and they got them to lie about Pastor Tony Alamo. And then they took those lies and they broadcast them through the media. They, they made movies about them. They make television programs. I, I, you know, they just filter it into all the different media in different ways to where people get it subliminally or um, uh, overtly. All the different ways that they can get it to people, they just pound it into people's heads that good is evil, that evil is good, good is evil, black is white, white is black. And they get people to believe that. And it's just like uh, how they did to the Jews in Germany. Yeah, exactly and, let me, how they did it. and let me tell you, since I've been sending out all these press releases regarding this story, recently I did an interview on an AM station, uh, and it was, they only gave me like eight minutes, six minutes, but the main concern there was they said, do you realize that you're you're backing a child abuser? That was their question. And I said, well, that's the reason I'm here to tell you that I'm not. And these are the facts that I have. And I had to be very concise. And let me tell you, uh, you know, they gave me a chance to explain it, but their, their slant was to basically make me look a little bit weird, okay? Sure. But I did my best. And uh, that's what I find when you get past the, when you get to some of these, you know, other stations, which I've got a few more lined up and it's get you know, and I get some really good responses from people when they really look into the subject. People on the surface are, do not want to go there. They won't believe you. But people that really realize and research have all come away and emailed me and said, Greg, thanks for your stance on this, because when you first did this years ago, we thought you were crazy we thought how could you represent a guy like that and they came around so really what i say to people is look into this story deeply before you convict somebody i thought in america someone is innocent until proven guilty well we know the courts can switch that around but don't let them do that to your hearts don't convict people before you know what they're all about and that goes for anybody i don't even care if it's somebody in the government i mean give everybody their their chance to explain what's going on, but realize that you're going to be lied to, you're going to be deceived, and it's not a diff it's a hard task, isn't it, to really get to the truth now? Oh, it really is. There's there's very little. Uh, Satan also uses truth. He'll take you know little slices of truth and cover it, or or he'll take it. I'm sorry, I had that backwards. He'll take like an ocean of truth just to put a little few drops of lie in there to get people to buy it. Exactly. And, yeah. And and that's the uh, very way that he deceives the world. And uh, what was what was it? Um, when you go to judging people, that's what the scripture says. Jesus mm -hmm. says, "Don't judge with your own judgment, but judge righteous judgment." Now, how do you get righteous judgment? You can't get righteous judgment from one side of a story. It can't happen, particularly when it's the beast, the mouth of the beast, that is propagating a one-world government and pushing that on the whole world. And people, it's just unbelievable to me that people don't see that. It really is. Satan really has people deceived and blinded. And you know, the Bible does say that people that aren't saved, that don't know the Lord, they are blind. You've heard this song, Amazing Grace, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, and when the blind lead the blind, both fall into the ditch. And people love to be blind, evidently. People, uh, the Bible says that also, you know, they don't want to come to the light because then their deeds are exposed. Well, we need to have our deeds exposed. We need to confess and forsake our sins and come to the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in his light. And those that love to do that will spend eternity with Jesus and with God in heaven. But those that don't, that want to stay in the darkness 
It's not going to be good for them on Judgment Day. They're going to end up with the devil in hell for eternity and then be cast into the lake of fire. Yeah, and uh, what we had a couple minutes here, so I did want to mention this. Could you tell people where to go to get some of these articles and things? I know you do some YouTubes, too. I'd like them to, uh, to go and see some of them uh, and listen. Well, if you just go to alamoministries.com, A-L-A-M-O-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S.com, um, the links are there to the YouTube channels and also to uh, uh, Tony's Facebook, where a lot of this stuff is posted. And uh, it's real easy to navigate. There, he's, uh, virtually everything that he's ever written or and, and much of the stuff that he has said there is there in audio. People can just really, if they want to know what Tony Lamo's all all about you can go there and you can hear what he's had to say for the last 50 years and uh believe me it's a lot there's a lot of information there that's very very powerful uh truth right and even counts. after this raid i've you know checked out you guys are getting more hits on your website than you ever have so the ministry isn't uh dead by any means is it not by any means no yeah and you're getting i remember when i checked it i was either three or four hundred thousand hits a week uh, that's a lot, and people all over the world were contacting even me from different countries who are in support of Tony and even passing out literature who have found themselves being jailed themselves in, in other countries. I find that to be quite interesting, which we never hear about here, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's, uh, that's another thing. You know, they don't like Pastor Lamo getting into all the different countries, and that's our big push because Jesus said, bring the gospel to the four corners of the world and that the gospel would be preached in every nation. So we get it translated, the, the gospel, into as many languages as we can afford as, as fast as we can, and we get it out there to the people. Okay, Bert, we're all out of time. I got it. can't even say goodbye, but that was a good message. We'll see you again. Okay? Thanks, Greg. Okay. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening